Hello, welcome or welcome back to today's lesson, which will help you feel better, but we can shorten this sentence and just say it will help you feel in the sense of sensing yourself. And especially the topic of today's lesson, the upper and middle back, and we will learn to make it more flexible. But by learning to make it more flexible, we also learn to bring it back to center. So it's a lesson for everyone, a lesson for everyone. So I think you already watched through the introductory speech. <laughs> That's done. Okay. And then <laughs> let's come to the lesson. Let's start the lesson. And what could be easier than lying on the back somehow, somewhere on, mostly on the back, please. As always, take a moment to arrive on the floor to <laughs> slowly, slowly let go more and more. And then move into the starting position. Have your feet standing or move your feet into the starting position. The feet standing, the knees somewhat pointed towards the ceiling. So the legs are standing on their own. And then bring your attention to your head how your head is resting on the floor or on a pillow and your head is pressing down on the floor. The weight, uh, or imagine or feel that you, the weight of your head is pressing against the floor, but the floor therefore is pressing against your head and that's, that's what you feel, the, the area that's pressing against the floor. Is that a big, a big round spot or it's very difficult to, to feel in detail with the back of your head. And then bring your hands the palm of your hands towards your face. or at least onto your nose and with your fingertips, very soft fingertips, touch your face or maybe even your ears. And if your, if your head would be a, a ball, basketball, and did you ever pick up a, a big ball, a basketball with your hand and the, and the basketball is much bigger than your hand and, but still you can approach it like a octopus, <laughs> the, the fingertips starting to make a connection with your face and you can touch your face very gently and very nicely and your fingertips slowly turn like into the tentacles, tentacles of a, of an octopus and see very gently and lovingly if you can if you can start to to bit by bit pull pull your face like a like as I said as you would pick up a pick up a big ball and and pull on your face or pull on the front of your head so that your chin comes closer to your chest. And do that bit by bit. Don't don't force it. Just just very gently, delicately, and lightly. Try to glue your hands to your face, or to the, the face also has a side. The face doesn't have a only have a front side, but also two sides. And see where you can touch your face and start to lift it so that the chin tilts. So you don't lift the face straight up to the ceiling, but it's, it's a tilting. It's a, it's a movement in your neck. You can feel the back of your neck is becoming longer when you do this. And your chin is coming towards your chest and once, little by little, so your, your head can lift over. You can even just pull your nose if your nose has enough uh, structure so you can, you can pull your head. Or you can help a little bit with your head, of course. So it can be an active and then passive or a passive movement. 
and we bring up the hands to the face so of course to so that the shoulders also come off the floor it's not just the the chin that comes closer to the chest but the shoulders the tips of the shoulders they come off the floor as well and you can think of your elbows your elbows while you pull on your face or while you pull on your head your elbows come closer to the floor or maybe the elbows come closer to your navel your belly button and do this um, of course not just one movement but many movements and maybe take breaks in between so uh, how to call this part of this movement session melting the hands to the face <laughs> and and lifting your head with your elbows so the el so think of the elbows that move towards where your pelvis or to the floor while your your palms are attached or glued to your face or your forehead or your cheeks your temples and then Take, take a take a rest just relax back onto the floor and now feel how your head is resting so maybe this time your head doesn't press that much against the floor maybe the head became a little bit lighter i mean not the head itself but how much the head is pressed with some residue tension in your spine or your, your back against the floor and then return to the same similar movement like just now so attach your <laughs> melt glue your palms your fingers your fingertips the berries of your fingertips or the berries of your palm somewhere where you find a a spot that feels nice that feels comfortable so we're looking for comfort so it's a, it's a nice unusual way to touch yourself and when you lift your head and bring your chin closer to your chest feel how your upper back presses against the floor so the area between the shoulder blades so where where's the area that starts to press against the floor so when your head is resting you can feel the back of your head on the floor but as soon as your head starts to as your neck starts to lengthen and your, your your neck starts to bend and to flex and your chin comes closer to your chest then suddenly this point where you can feel that you're resting it's not the back of your head the back of the head is in the air and then the, the your upper back starts to press against the floor so so feel that feel that area in between your shoulders or shoulder blade or maybe already the middle back that presses against the floor and you can bring your elbows a little bit more to the right then it's then you're leaning more on your right shoulder blade or the upper right upper part of the chest or when you move your elbows more to the left then you're leaning more on your left upper part of your chest and then come slowly back to the floor take a rest so we don't want to overwork the neck and the arms and the shoulders maybe if you have the flexibility you can take your head from both sides so the right hand lifts the head from the right side and the left head hand lifts the head from the left side and see if you can lean against all if you can feel how you lean against your upper back more to the left of the spine more to the right of the spine you can go in zigzag lines the higher you lift your, the higher you lift your head the, the more you start to lean on the middle of your back but keep your keep your neck flexible so take it slowly enough so that you can almost feel your neck tilting vertebra by vertebra so there's seven pieces inside and most of them can can move in relation to each other and then it's the upper chest the the vertebra yes some stuff inside we hopefully never get to see <laughs> some but we can feel that, that you can bend bit by bit and when you take it slow and you can work out the details you can work out every little 
minute detail when you lift the more to the left or more to the right or you can you can move your head in circles you can breathe into it so you can go up and down in lines so you can lean against every little part in your upper back and the higher up you come maybe you can feel that too in your belly muscles the up to, what is it the abs maybe if you come too high they start to shake a little bit means they need a little bit more training so that's a good exercise a non-threatening exercise a very gentle exercise to work your abs and then take a rest Let's take a rest on the back and just feel <laughs> wow, how you're lying on the back now, how, how, how maybe you can feel your head, your head is lighter, but now your chest is more heavy. So you moved <laughs> weight from the head. If there was too much pressure on the head, it's now it's in the middle of the back, more in the middle of the back. And what's more heavy, the head or the chest? So it should be in the chest. Yes, so interesting feeling, isn't it? To, to lie on your chest and that the head is not so prevalent, pre prevalent anymore. And then we continue with this exercise. So bring your feet to stand again. And with your hands, this time get hold of your left knee. And remember the feeling in your hands when you were holding your head. So your hands are holding your knee, the held of your face, how you held your face before and start to invite your knee to come closer to where? To the chest. And go bit by bit. So bring it closer to your chest, pull your knee closer to your chest, or maybe pull your knee closer to your left armpit. And let go again. So it's like bit by bit. And you can help with your right foot. You can press with your right foot against the floor to tilt your pelvis backwards. And with your left hand, you can hold, for example, your left buttock or the left part of your pelvis and help lift the pelvis a little bit off the floor, the left part of your pelvis. And with the right hand, you can pull your left knee closer towards your chest, or you can start to hold, if that's possible, your, your left foot or your left lower leg and try different positions of pulling your, you can lift your head, you can bring your chin closer to your chest and pull your leg hold your leg maybe like a like you would hold a baby and bring your yes a baby your left knee closer to your chest or zigzag lines closer to your left armpit or closer to the floor on the left next to you and and see make that many movements Maybe take some breaks in between and then again summon your hands and <laughs> bring your hands like the tentacles of an octopus over your knee or over your lower leg and start to bring your knee closer to your chest and maybe press with your right foot against the floor to lift your pelvis or help with your hands to lift your left side of your pelvis, the buttocks. And we want to have this uh, movement not in the lower back, but to come up into the middle back. So lift your pelvis more and more so that you don't hang through in the lower back. The lower back can remain stable and stiff if you like, but the movement sh should arrive in the... You should lean against the middle of your back or maybe even the your upper back. So that's our 
landing area. To roll a little bit more to the left, so you feel that you're leaning to the left of your spine, in your middle, in the middle of your back, and maybe take a half rest, so you just let go while you're holding your left knee, and you rest 50%, you just let go and see where can you where can you, where do you have tension that you actually don't need? And then continue with the movement. So bring your knee a little bit closer to your chest or to your chin or to your, to your neck and a little bit less. And again, try not to have the movements, the rounding in your lower back, but that the movement can come up to the middle of your chest and, or maybe even your upper chest. All right, and then we need one more proper break on the back with the legs extended. We, now I'm like a, a, a shipwreck that's to the left. <laughs> How is it for you? Do you feel you're leaning more against the left side? So that's what happened. You're the left side relaxed and you're leaning more against the, you, can distribute your weight more on your left side, there's less habitual tension, that's why it feels so flat. That's how it should be, more into the direction. Of course, there's no limit to improvement, this can always get better, especially if we do this exercise often, <laughs> even my head is slanted to the left now. So the last part, are we already at the last part of the exercise, what is left to do? Of course, the right knee, so bring your feet to stand again with the knees somewhat pointing towards the ceiling, your hands, prepare your hands, soft fingertips, and then like the sentinels in the matrix, the hands find your right knee, so or like the tentacles of an octopus, whatever image, and then hold your right knee and start to move your right knee a little bit more, a little bit less, towards where? Towards the middle of your chest or towards your neck or towards your right armpit or your right shoulder tip or the right knee towards the floor on the right side next to you and your hands can hold, make this contact with the lower leg or with the uh, right foot. And with your left foot, you can stomp against the floor. You can just gently press against the floor in order to help lift, lift the pelvis. And you lean against your middle back or to the left of the spine in the middle of your back or to the right of your spine. And take your time here. It's really the, the slower you go, the more details you're able to perceive. You can take a half rest somewhere and see is there anything you don't need, anything you can let go and then continue with the movement or the idea of this lesson to lean against your middle back or your upper back and different parts thereof.
And again, the movement should not be in the lower back. The lower back should not round. It's the, you want to lean against the middle back or your upper back. Okay, so it's time for, uh, is it the last rest already? But extend your legs, <laughs> and, yes, and see how it feels now, how your pelvis, how you lean more against your pelvis and how weight, even more weight comes off your chest. Uh, no, even more weight comes off your head. So how is your head resting now? How do you perceive your head? And when you lift your head, how easy it is? Is it easy to lift your head? Or you can help, still help a little bit with your hands to lift your head. Let's, let's try it for the last time to bring, to stand your feet and bring your hands towards your head, towards your face and make a contact with the fingertips and your palms with the face and see how do you touch your face now? How has this changed the quality how, how you touch yourself and then think of your elbows, your elbows moving closer to your chest and your palms glued to your face or your head lifting you <laughs> and how far can you come up now? So you're able to round, to become round and be able to come straight again Ah, on the back, so a last rest on the back. Now it's time to <laughs> come up. You could come up to a sitting position or a squat position. Or maybe you, your ability to sit on the floor has improved through a more flexible upper and middle back. Or you can feel how, how you move. Well, maybe it became lighter or Maybe just easier, more integrated. What is the meaning? Easier to turn, easier to sit. Easier to squat maybe. And then come up and we will see how it is in standing. How do you feel? <laughs> how do you feel? What do you sense? How do you turn? So, I hope you enjoyed this lesson as much as I enjoyed teaching it. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next lesson.